I'm here to talk about today <clears throat> the comparison of firearms for what do you really need compared to what you could get? Are you trying to get the most? Are you thinking that your results in war or hunting or defense or uh, fending off an invasion or a revolution or whatever? Are you thinking that your results come from the fanciness of your gun or from the practicality of it or from something else entirely? And that may not make sense, but let me try to break it down. In the Mexican-American War, we Americans had the rifle, the, I think it was the 30-40 Krag, whereas the, the, the Mexicans had the... I believe it was the 1898 Mauser. So the, the German Mauser is pretty much the best rifle in the world at that time. A very good rifle. They were out shooting us. They, had, they, were, they outgunned us. They had better guns than we did in every way. And we still won the war. They lost. And yet we still realized it's, it's, it tells you something when you, you win the war, but you realize, hey, we need to take their guns because they have good guns. And so do you feel that your likelihood of success is based on the gun that you have? Or do you think that your likelihood of success comes from something else? Maybe determination, maybe strategy, maybe popular support, maybe it comes from God. Where one nation under God, pretty much everyone after the revolution in 1776, um, we attributed our success to God, to a miracle, and to strategy, but not to being, to having superior firepower, that's for sure. I think we put too much stock in the stuff that we own and in trying to get the fanciest fanciest machines possible instead of what really matters which is god and strategy and being wise and having the truth on your side having the people on your side which are two different things by the way but they usually go together because most people usually try to see the truth So, if you had a choice between two firearms, one of them is $800, and it's a compact scout bolt-action rifle. They're both in 308, but one of them is a 20-inch barrel, and one of them is maybe a 26 inch barrel one of them <clears throat> takes you know common commonly available magazines and one of them takes proprietary magazines that only hold like four four shots because it's it's built as a hunting rifle it's not built as a tactical rifle one of them the hunting rifle is a one moa gun whereas the other one the tactical rifle is 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 a sub MOA gun, so it's like point. It's it's less than one MOA. It's very it's very accurate. So now, and I don't know the weights. I don't remember in this case. So, let's say that they're the same weight. Now think about it. And but the hunting rifle is much cheaper, much cheaper. Now, think about it. Which one do you really need? Do you, can you truly say that you need or don't need one of these? Can you say that you need the scouting rifle that's got a 20-inch barrel, it's a sub-MOA accuracy, and it takes you know, co you know, really common magazines? Or would you be just as good with the hunting rifle 
that has proprietary magazines and a 20, 20, 26 inch barrel. But it's still a one MOA gun. Now, think about it. If you, you know, guns are very accurate. They're machines. They, they work to the precision of a machine. If, if you're missing the target, I doubt, I doubt it's because of the gun. Unless maybe it's like an M14 or something. Like it's a really, like a 6 MOA gun. Then maybe, maybe there is something with the gun. But beyond a certain point, it's not the gun that's going to miss. It's you. It's not you, I'm sorry, it's not the gun that's going to cause the problem. If there's a, if there's a failure to hit the target, it's, it's after a certain point. You know, a, a man-sized target is this big. It doesn't matter if you hit down here, or up here, or over here, or up here, or here, or up here. It doesn't matter. If you hit the guy, you hit the guy. And after a certain amount of, after a certain point of fine-tuning that, you know, if you have a, a grouping that's like this big, or a grouping that's this big, it doesn't really matter because the point is that you hit the target within a certain margin of error. A 2 MOA or a 3 MOA gun is going to be just as good in real use as a 1 MOA gun because even if you went to the utmost extreme of where those bullets are capable of you know, straying off to the left or to the right or up or down, if it's within a certain distance, it's still going to hit the target which is a man-sized target. And we're talking about two guns that are one MOA or less. You know, you can say, and, and I think we're overly critical. These days, I think we are overly critical because we're fearful people. We live in fear, and that's why we're overly critical. And so we hide our fear between a bluster and a bravado of being really tactical and really smart and really savvy when it comes to fighting, even though we've never fought a war. Some of us have. Not me. I've never fought in a war. But some people among us, some people have fought in wars. And yes, they are savvy. But, you know, like, don't even bother using X and X type of pistols in our, you know, shooting range training, just use a Glock. All the professionals use Glocks. Well, maybe. But not really all of them, is it? I think that the cult of Glock needs some counter-evangelism. But the point is, like, don't, you know, don't even try to do that. Only a silly person would try to use that. I think we overestimate the value of our weapons compared to the value of our personal personal uh, actions and our personal choices. So like I'm saying, these guns that we have are far more precise than we are. There's very few people who are more precise than the firearm itself. If you are really able to shoot with a .3 MOA gun, you are a rare breed that it would make a difference between a 1 MOA gun and a .3 MOA gun. There are some of you out there who probably can't make that difference. But the difference is slim. And most people, for most people, it's not going to matter. Like, what is that big gun, the Shaytak Intervention? You know, you can have a gun that can do that, that has that much precision, to out to a long range and whatever. But most people are not going to be able to make use of it. Most people are only really able to make use of a 2 MOA gun or a 3 MOA gun. As far as I'm aware, the M4, which the U.S. Army uses, is like a 3 or a 4 MOA gun. I could be wrong, but I've, heard, I've had people tell me that's where it is. So, I mean, 
And that's what we're using for our military. I'm not saying that people aren't better shots than that. I'm just saying that's the level of a firearm. That's the level of weapon that, that cuts the mustard, you know. In order to fight a war, I, of course it could be better, but it gets the job done. So it's great that you... So, I mean, the, the idea that civilians own one MOA guns, that's fabulous. That's wonderful. That's great. I fully support that. I am, I am 100% in support of .001 MOA guns. That's great. I'm just saying, for you personally, does it matter? Do you really need the .3 MOA gun, or is it just as good or better to have the .1 MOA gun with a long barrel. <sighs> you know, how tall are you? Are you 56 inches tall? Are you six foot? If, if, if a six foot man is able to walk around inside of a building, then why aren't you able to carry a 24 inch barrel rifle with you? And, you know, hopefully you're gonna have some, you know, I, you know, if you can fit yourself through the door, your gun can probably fit through the door too. In my opinion, just put a bayonet on the end of that. And then when you're going around the corners, yeah, you have a long gun, but you're going around the corners with a, with a pointy knife at the end of it. In which case, if someone jumps around the corner, they're jumping right into your knife. I mean... We're talking about geometry here. Of course, it's easier to carry. Of course, you know, there's less stuff, you know, it's smaller, it's less to handle. But it's not an inferior weapon either way because it's large. I think that there's advantages to having a large weapon, including if you really do come down to melee, you have the range advantage of my weapon is longer than yours. You can have your bayonet or you can just jam it in his face and it keeps him away from you. It's a long stick made of metal that you can hit him with. Whereas if you have a 15 inch AR-15, that's not really gonna help you in the melee. You have to resort to something else. The, uh, the, the AR-15 that's 15 inches barrel is not gonna help you there. Whereas if you have a bolt action rifle with a bayonet or something like that affixed at the front, Yes, that's going to help you. You're going to pretty much own whoever's in there because you can keep them at a, a kicking distance or just outside of hitting distance. And uh, you can stab them. So, and to my opinion, if you, can, if you can clear the corner, it's geometry, you know. You can, you can clear the corner with or without a big weapon. But I can imagine there's a, 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 a room that's really, really small, in which case it would get in your way because it's just too big to go around inside of a small quarters. I can understand that, but you've got a sidearm. But, I mean, you want a rifle. But I, I can understand, but there is a trade-off. But you're all, in every trade-off, you're also gaining something from having a long-barreled rifle. There's something you gain, there's something you lose. And, you have, and there's not a better or a worse. You have to pick what you need. What do you need? What's going to be good for you? So, but I think that we value our weapons these days. I, this is a mistake in our thinking. We're not thinking about God. We're not remembering that we are one nation under God. God, and I'm not talking about a general God. I'm talking about Jesus Christ, the Lord the biblical God. He's the one who made our nation, the United States of America. And he's the one who guides it and provides for it. You know, there's a song about that. The, he who guides us and lights us and leads us with the light that shines from above. There's a song about that. We're one nation under God, where we exist as a nation because God made our nation. He founded, he created our nation. 
in the fires of 1776. There's a reason why we exist. And we have a privilege in that regard that many nations don't. I don't consider that modern France has the privilege that it was founded directly by a miracle of God, by an act of God on purpose. There's two countries that I'm aware of that have that, the United States and Israel. Okay? So we are very blessed. And maybe the Norwegian countries of Denmark, Norway, Sweden, Iceland, you know, because of the way they were founded. There's, you know, there's very few countries that have a privilege like that. Maybe Greece, you know. We have to remember our God, because if our country falls, it's because we abandoned him. And if our country prospers, it's because we remembered him. We get, and even the Bible says this, we get the nation that we deserve because of our moral actions. If we want to preserve the nation, maybe we should stop stealing and sinning and lying and disrespecting our, our parents and, and, and disrespecting our neighbors and doing some things that are not good. In our personal lives, it has nothing to do with politics. And then maybe, strangely, inexplicably, miraculously, the politics will start getting better. Maybe we need to stop abortion. And stop teaching atheism in the schools. The country will stop falling apart. Okay, but I, I, if you are a modern American and you are concerned with the way things are going, I recommend you read the Old Testament because God is a warrior. He said so in Exodus chapter 20. I believe it's Exodus chapter 20. He said, Yahweh is a warrior. He said this about himself. The Psalms say, God trains my hands for battle, my fingers for war. So many of God's chosen people whom he used and he gave the Holy Spirit on them were warriors who picked up the sword and their great service for God was fighting on his behalf in physical wars. Do not tell me that God changed from the Old Testament to the New Testament and now Jesus is a mixture of Gandhi and Tiny Tim and Mother Teresa. Hey, don't get me wrong. I love Tiny Tim and I love Mother Teresa and Gandhi had some good ideas. Not all of his ideas were good. Some of his ideas were, not all of them. But Jesus Christ is greater than any of them. And by the way, he is not, you know, just a pushover, a wimp, a, a meek and mild. He is meek, and he is also brash. Jesus is humble, and he's also authoritative and powerful and strong. And he tells you what to do. He listens to you, and he also tells you what to do. God is not like the elves of Lord of the Rings who tell you yes and no and let you make your own choice. He tells you what's right. He gives you the truth. He's not worried. He's not fearful that you're going to go and, go and follow his advice and then be mad, mad at him later. If you're mad at him later, it's because you're sinning. It's not because they, did, they were wrong to give you the advice. So, would you choose the super tricked out rifle? Or would you choose the uh, slight, slightly more inexpensive hunting rifle? But they're both really good. They're not low on quality by any standard. But they're, they're a little bit different, and they have different features. One of them is really tactical. One of them is more like a hunting rifle. It's, got, it's a four-shot capacity magazine, and it's a bolt action. Whereas the other one has a detachable mag that you can get a 30-round mag, a 10-round mag, whatever you want. And they're commonly available. I don't remember the weight on these two particular ones. It doesn't matter. But if you want me to give you the answer, I'm going to give you the answer. 
I think you should choose the one that you love the most. The one that makes you happy, the one that you feel good about, the one that you feel led to get, the one that you can afford, and the one that's going to work for you. And don't think that you need a Ferrari hot rod. But don't get yourself a beat, beat up lemon either. Just get what is going to work for you. If you can be, get lucky and get a Ferrari, there's no reason not to drive a Ferrari. Ferraris are great. Ferraris are cool. So are Corvettes. I like the Corvette Stingray. That's my favorite. The the Viper and the Corvette Stingray, which I know the, the, the Viper. I like the Viper and I like the Stingray. They're two different manufacturers, two different kinds of car. What I'm saying is I like Corvettes. I like Vipers. I like Stingrays. Fancy cars are cool. Fancy guns are cool. But you know, a Ford Model T is also cool. And so is a Jeep Grand Cherokee. So is a uh, Land Rover. So is a F-150 Super Duty. So is a minivan. If you need to carry a lot of people and a lot of stuff, a minivan is a great choice. A Nissan can get the job done. You know, a 1960s muscle car is a great car. A motorcycle. A motorcycle can do a good job. That's very fast. So, I mean, you can get a Ferrari, but there's also a lot of options out there. In You can get the, the Ferrari of rifles, or you can get the uh, Toyota of rifles. They'll do, both do the right thing for you. You know, if you're willing to go 308 and then have a bolt-action rifle, do you need three 10-round uh, mags or four four-round mags? You know, what's the difference? In terms of weight, probably not much. But four-round mags are easier to, to carry around in store, whereas 10-round mags are kind of big compared to, compared to a four-round mag. A 30-round mag is kind of big, and you're still carrying that much bullets. It's how much bullets are you willing to carry. It's kind of heavy. Bullets are heavy. I mean, if you carry 30 rounds in 4-round mags or 30 rounds in 10-round mags, the difference in weight is not much. That's why we just go to 5.56 and carry much more for less weight. But, you know, it's like, are you going to have 5 sets of 5 or 2 sets of 10 and one set of five. Are you going to have three sets of ten, or are you going to have six sets of five? What's the difference? How many magazines, but that's about it. The weight is going to be about the same. You know, I think we, we do the calculus on this to try to get, you know, find the, the difference between two comparing firearms, and the difference is this close, you know, and then we consider anyone else who makes a different choice they're foolish. They're going to get decimated. Don't be so sure. In fact, a lot of times God uses the advanced weaponry of the enemy against them. Think about uh, Deborah and Barak. Um, Deborah and Barak. They went and they fought for Israel. And the, uh, the enemy had iron chariots. They had chariots made of iron or covered in iron, you know, tanks, basically. And they got stuck down in the mud on a rainy day. And because of a miracle of God, he sent rain. And those chariots got stuck in the mud. And then the Israelis uh, defeated the enemy. And there's many more examples like that where the enemy thought they had the advantage because the, the devil usually gives all the wealth and the technological advantage to his side, hoping that that's going to give him the victory. And then God uses... The very things that the bad guys have that they thought was going to be their secret weapon, God uses it against them and then gives it to, the, to his people so that they can use it righteously to win. And he uses the, the stuff against the bad guys. So 
don't underestimate that God can give anyone the victory, even if they are poor, outnumbered, and outgunned, because God is a God of miracles, and God, Jesus Christ, is the God of our country. So if you really want to make America great again, go to the source. Jesus Christ is the God of America. He's the God of other countries too, but he's, he's our God. And, Amer and Americanism, or the, whole, the heart and spirit and soul and truth and reality and the facts and details and the, the threads and the fibers and the detail about what, and everything that goes into what it means to be an American. And so many people have put into that. But it all comes from and goes back to and is connected with Jesus Christ. This, this great, artistic, wonderful, beautiful thing that is America is something that he cooked up, and he's continuing to watch over and to guide it. So if you care about our country and if you care about the world, it's good that you arm up and have your Second Amendment and make your detailed choices about your firearms. Just do what you love and respect what someone else does because they might love something else. They might want uh, 1903 Springfield, and that's what they want, and that's what they're ready to fight the apocalypse with. Okay, who cares? It's good enough, right? It is good enough. It's more than good enough. And if you're successful, if you'll have the option to upgrade. Let's just say that. If you're successful, you'll be able to upgrade if you want, if you need it. I'll leave it. I'll, I'll let you figure that out for yourselves. So, I recommend that, you know, you consider what is, it, what is it you really need. And I feel like some people, they want, they want the, the darling gun that is a hunt, like a hunting rifle that they're really going to love, but it's not tactical enough, so they, they feel the social pressure. Don't get that thing. That's not good enough. And then other people are like, I want the tactical rifle, and they, they look down on anyone who gets a simple old hunting rifle. Hunting rifles are fine. Just pick what you love, pick what you want, and trust God to be the majestic God of battle who gives you victory whether you have, you know, nothing at all or, the, you know, the AK-47, you know? Trust God and go your way in Jesus' name. God bless America. So... That's my considerations on firearm selection. Pretty much any gun is going to work if you're following God, which gives you ability as a warrior to make your own artistic and tactical choice within reason. But, you know, I think that sometimes the enemies, they have their great technology. It actually works against them. And God does that on purpose. So, God bless America, and thanks for listening.